In this video, I'd like to go through the process of turning a Python script into a Kubernetes cron job that will run every five minutes. Um, a cron job in Kubernetes uh, is very similar to a Unix cron job, with the exception that in Kubernetes, the cron job executes Docker images rather than Unix executables. So first off, let's have a look at the Python script that we want to execute. Okay, so this is the Python script that we want to execute. So as you can see, it uh, does nothing. It just prints out some log statements. So the reason we're printing out these log statements is just so that we know that the job is running. Um, once we, now that we have the Python script, the next step is that we need to package up the Python script as a Docker image. Um, in my case, um, we're going to be using Kubernetes running in uh, Minikube. So because of that, I want to build the Docker image directly into the Docker uh, daemon running in Minikube. So I'm just going to set my Docker environment. Okay, uh, then I'm just going to go one directory lower and I'm going to build the Docker image. Um, okay. Alright. Um, sorry, before I continue, let's just have a look at that Docker file. So as you can see, there's nothing out of the ordinary. Um, we are just um, copying the script and we are customizing the command that's executed each time the Docker image runs. Okay. So now let's have a look at uh, whether the image exists now. So let's do Docker image ls. And if we scroll up, we should see our simple job Docker image. Okay, there it is, our simple job Docker image. Okay, so just to make sure that everything's working, let's run that Docker image. Uh, docker run um, it-rm simple job latest. And we should see the log statement and we should see it sleeping. Okay. All right, let's just wait because it's gonna sleep for 30 seconds. So let's just wait a few seconds. And we should see the second um, log statement, the third log statement, I mean. Okay, great. So the Docker image is working just fine. Um, now that we have that Docker image, now we can go into the Kubernetes side of things. So um, with Kubernetes, I always forget the syntax of the YAML files. Um, so what I usually do as a shortcut is I use cube control create to create a template of the YAML file and then I modify the uh, YAML file accordingly and then I will apply the YAML file. So let's start by creating the template uh, YAML and the way we do this is by doing cube control uh, create cron job. Uh, let's call the cron job simple job. And we specify the image, which is simple job. And we also specify the schedule. And we want it to run every five minutes. So let's specify star five. So that means that it will run every five minutes. And the hour of the day, uh, the day of the month, the day of the week, um, and the other options, they don't matter, okay? Because we are, we're only concerned that it runs every five minutes, okay? Then we specify that we want it to dry run and not apply on the server immediately. So we specify dry run client, okay? So when we press enter, we should see the YAML being generated. Oh, sorry, I didn't specify the output as YAML, so let's do O YAML. Okay, so as you can see, it, it outputted this uh, YAML to a, the standard output but we want to edit it, so let's output it to the um, to a file, let's redirect it to a file. So let's call it job.yaml, okay? Okay, so now let's have a look at job.yaml. Um, okay, so I just need to make one change, which is to specify the image pull policy. Um, I'm just gonna set the image pull policy to if not present. And the reason I'm doing this is just because I'm using the Docker daemon in the um, 
the Docker daemon in the uh, Minikube installation. Um, so there's actually no Docker repository. So I don't want it to attempt to fetch uh, because it's already available locally. Okay. okay, now that we have the job YAML file, we can apply it. So let's do kubectl uh, apply dash f job YAML. Okay. Okay, so see whether that worked or not. We can do kube control get cron jobs. And there, as you can see, we have the cron job. Okay. Um, what we need to do now is we need to um, what we need to do now is uh, we need to wait for the job to run. So we can do that by just typing kubectl kube control get pods watch. Okay. So within five minutes, we should see another pod uh, run. Okay, so as you can see, the pod is now running. Um, let's have a look at pods. And there, it's in the running state, okay? So it runs for 30 seconds because inside the Python script, we had a, um, a line where we sleep for 30 seconds. So let's have a look. And there, so after around 30 seconds, it completes, okay? Um, what uh, the cron job will actually, uh, in Kubernetes, the cron job will actually leave the job running, uh, the, the previously ran job um, uh, pod available. So what we can do is we can check the logs for it. So we can do kubes control logs, simple log. And there we can see the logs that the Python script uh, outputted. Okay. Before we end, I want to highlight a few practical concerns about Kubernetes cron jobs. First, if we need to control whether or not another job can run, if the current job hasn't finished yet, you can set concurrency policy to either allow, forbid, or replace. The default is allow, which means that if the current job hasn't finished yet and it's already time to run the next job, Kubernetes will allow that, okay? If you do not want this behavior, you can set it to forbid. Second, if you want to control how many job executions are present at any point, you can set the options successful job history limit and failed jobs history limit. This is useful if you need to be able to view the logs of previously ran jobs. And third, and this is one of the most important points, if you specify, if you want to schedule the jobs to run at a specific time of the day, make sure that you specify the time in the UTC time zone. Um, when I was first using Kubernetes cron jobs, I thought it would follow the time zone of the master node. And I was burnt by this issue. Um, I wanted my job to run at 4 a.m. in the morning, and it was instead running uh, in the afternoon. So I'd just like to say uh, before we end, uh, thank you for watching. Let me know if you have any questions, uh, whether any of the instructions were not clear. Uh, thank you very much for watching.